OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Welcome to this presentation on the Advanced ESL course. This is um, a newly updated Advanced ESL online course. I'm Francisca Wentworth. I'm one of the OTAN trainers or subject matter expert, affectionately known as a SME. And there's my email in case you need it. And I'll, I'll uh, post a link to this at some point so you can have the PowerPoint. So just a little background about me. So I'm an OTAN, one of the subject matter experts. I've been in adult education since 1987. I've worked with OTAN since 2005. Um, I've been a coach with TMAC, o OAC, DLAC, so the different professional development projects along the line. I was in TMAC, uh, the first cohort, and my friend Ryan here, we were in the same one in 2004. And then 2005, I became a coach. Um, I taught ESL at all levels for 32 years and developed two Moodle online ESL courses for OTAN. So one of them was this advanced ESL that was a Moodle course. Um, and then designed in 2010. And then I also did a writing course called The Right Stuff, which are, have both been moved over to Canvas and have been updated. Well, The Right Stuff is still a work in progress. And I was the director of Jefferson Adult School in Daly City from 2016 to 20. I retired in January. I didn't know about the pandemic, but my timing was, in my mind, perfect. So just a little background here. So I'm calling this a new advanced DSL course because there have been many changes. So the original course 2010 um, is when that was designed. As I mentioned, it was in Moodle. It was designed for adult ed students, high intermediate to advanced level. And I had some teachers actually in adult basic ed use it as well. So the course has been um, not only moved over from Moodle, but new content, new activities. Um, so it's it's different from the original course. And it can be used as a standalone course, so for distance learning or hybrid blended learning. So using it with your face-to-face uh, -face class. So our agenda today, we're gonna just go through the structure a little bit. Um, and I'll show you some of the different types of learning activities. Most of this presentation we'll be doing live on, on the actual course. So this is just an intro. The course has 18 topics. So it's based topic based and then the competencies and practice are built into the topics. So the competencies, learning competencies, uh, there's grammar, sentence structure, vocabulary building, practice, um, lots of videos. So listening and comprehension skills. Uh, quizzes that go along with the videos, uh, reading activities, writing and speaking. And the topics um, are, this is in general, so there are goals, personal information, uh, family, family relationships, uh, famous people, biographies, places, government, uh, several units or three units to do with nutrition, health, illness, uh, emergencies, which is similar to the, based on a um, the ill civics unit on your emergencies, emergencies and disasters. And then shopping, consumer awareness, uh, technology, careers, housing, finances, and the environment. So this is the home page. Let me just close that chat for a little. So this class, once you once you receive this course, you'll be able to edit. So this home page is just a you know, teachers post a message. So if it's your own class, you would post the welcome message and anything you want to say about your class as an introduction. And then there's a little navigation tip with some links, links to the course overview, some instructor information, learning content. These are things that can be um, found. This is all, you'll find all this in the modules as well. And then just a general, really brief course overview just talks about what the basic skills are that they're going to be covering this class. And then there's some quick links below here as well. So this is your home page. And then if then there's a syllabus. So I've put in um, the, these items at the top. This this if it becomes your course, you would want to remove this section, but I've left it here so that you can um, 
look at some of the resources that are here. And once you don't need that, before you publish this for your students, um, you can just delete this section. And then the, the basic syllabus describes the course, what the learning outcomes are, um, course materials, this would be teacher preference. So if there's a textbook you're using or something else that you want students to be looking at, in addition to the content within this course, you would post it here. I only put a good, you know, supplemental material. So they need a good headset uh, with a microphone and a good internet connection. And then there's just some attendance, some course basic tech skills the students should have, a little bit about netiquette, and that's pretty much all it would be here. Below this, they show this, these are not in order. Once it's your course and you add dates to the assignments, depending on how you wanna set up your class, um, then these activities would show in order. And then, I mean, a lot of you are probably familiar with Canvas, but announcements of course is where you would post announcements for your students upcoming assignments or any kind of information you want to share with them. So the bulk of the course is in the modules. So we're going to go there. Okay, so it starts off with just a section for the instructors only. So this do not publish, right? This is unpublished for students. So there's some information about the videos used in the course. There are several, and as, and, you know, as a teacher, you can hide activities if you'd rather, you know, think, oh, this is too much. I don't want them to do all these. You can hide the activities and then students won't see them. And there's a document just for the teacher about the course. There's just a, the licensing information and then some information about H5P and Learn360. So there are some Learn360 videos in this course and there are um, H5P activities or several. Um, each unit has at least one, if not more. So there's a little information about how those work and sometimes they might need extra support. So then below that, it starts with the intro for the students. So there's an about your instructor. This, of course, would be something that you would edit. So I'm just going to open it for a second so you can see. So you would put your own information, put your own photo, little biography. If you want to put some contact information for the students, that would all go here. So this is this course, once it's yours, is editable. <laughs> Um, the course interview, interview, sorry, <laughs> overview is the same as the syllabus. The only thing I added to this, which again, you can change is the, um, it's taking a while when I try to open things, come on. Um, there we go. The only thing I added was a grading. Again, you would delete this first section. I added a grading scheme in case you want it. Again, if you want to use this, you can keep it here. If not, you're free to delete it. So that's, again, up to you or whoever the teacher is. And there's a course master glossary. So each unit has a glossary, but we added this uh, master glossary because that way if a student wants to go back and look for a word, they can look for it here and instead of trying to remember, gee, was that in unit three or four? Which unit was it in? So I'll just show you that briefly. And this is just a list of the words uh, without the audio, but they can just search. You know, there was, I think it started with G. So you look for G and they can search through to find the word they're looking for. So those are all the words uh, in the vocabulary used in this course. Okay, I'm trying to get back. All right. So then there's a little instructions for students. So there are Canvas instructions for students. There's a discussion that's just called Ask the Teacher. This is where students can post questions to you as the teacher. Um, you know, anything grammar related or you know, assignment related, something like that. There's technology requirements, which includes, um, you know, the, the RAM their, their computers need and all that. So there's a whole list of that. And then I posted some instructions on how to do some of the assignments. So for doing a writing assignment, for example, 
So all the assignments, like all the writing assignments have this little pencil icon. I tried to use the icons. There are different ones. There are ones for speaking, ones for um, just an assign, just a, instructions, directions, have different icons. So this just shows them what they need to do to do a writing assignment. And all the writing assignments would be the same. So they click the start assignment button. So it's right here. I just give them an image of what that looks like and then submitting their assignment. And then I did the same for the discussions, uh, similar instructions for doing discussions. Again, the discussions all have this little person icon and these are the instructions for that. And then there's just a, a file. This is a PDF file that they can download about how to record video. So then they'd be able to just go through this. These instructions are also in the speaking assignments themselves. So they'll have to see that. Can I go back to modules. OK. And then there's a class resources page. I haven't put a whole lot here. This is, again, up to you. You can add um, your own resources. I have there's a verb list in here and some links to some online dictionaries. And that's all. So then the course itself starts with this pre-unit. There's a pre-test, which is just a basic, um, it covers different parts of grammar. I'm just a, Will the course materials be available? Uh, I'm not clear what you mean available. I mean, once you have this course, all this would be available to you. If I understand your question. Okay, so in the pretest is just to give you and the student a, a basic idea of their level. It's just a grammar based test. And there's a, you know, it says in here that they can, um, they're not expected to know everything because what they're going to be studying is what they'll learn more. So this is just to give you an idea of where they are. And then there's some basic a glossary on basic computer vocabulary and then an H5P quiz. So the H5P quizzes uh, will report to the gradebook and there are different types of activities. So this one I'll just show you is there's a sort of a drag and drop activity. All right, so they just have to put in whatever the right word is. So here we're looking for the toolbar. So they would just drag, drag it here and drop that and fill those in and then submit. And once they submit, they have the option to retry and it will also show them the answers once they've submitted if they want to see that so that's one of the types of activities h5p activities and they're nice they're, they're interactive activities okay so then let me go back to scroll down a little bit here there's also a listening here on, on computer and technology it's a listening and a reading this comes from um, VOA, just so on this one, they would, um, so this is just directions. They would listen to this and they can read along. And then there's a quiz that follows with some of this vocabulary. Okay. Sorry, I'm seeing chats here. Oh, the link to the course. Once you, once you, um, once the course is ready, um, you can contact Marjorie. There's also a link um, that I have posted in the PowerPoint. So then you would get your own copy of the course, and you wouldn't be linking to this one. This is a master course, and Marjorie would be making once the course is ready, making copies for you. All right. And so anyway, there's a quiz related to that, as, as is the case with most of these. So I'm going to go probably opening up things in this first unit. And after that, we'll just look through the, the general topics through the rest of the units. So just to show you, all, all of these are built in the same way. So they start off with vocabulary and then quizzes for the, the uh, about the vocabulary. So the glossaries all have audio, so they look like this. 
So this is about word forms. So I put only in the first one, just so they know what these, you know, that V and what these mean, the verb, noun, adjective, adverb. So then they can read the word and the audio just pretty much reads what you see written here. So they can listen to it and so they can hear the pronunciation and so on. So that's just how they all, so the, the audio file is below whatever the word is with the definition and an example. And then there, each, each of the vocabulary or glossaries is followed by a Quizlet activity with those words, um, H5P word uh, activity. This is a, I'll just show you what these look like for a minute. This is, um, there we go. All right, so they get their hints or she refused to, so then they click the tip, do what someone says, and then, you know, the word, vocabulary word is obey. So they would just go through and fill this in, uh, doing that, and like before, just submit and so on. And then there's also another H5P activities, dictations, which is kind of cool. So on these, they would, when they listen, it, the, the sentence will be read at normal speed and then twice slowly so that they can write. And then there's a little thing here that they need to remember punctuation just so that it doesn't get marked wrong. Okay. I'm feeling impatient with my internet, but I shouldn't say anything. Here we go, come on. Okay, so I'll go down a little bit more. Okay, so then the next section, so it starts with vocabulary, sorry, the next section is assignments. So in the assignments, this is just a, uh, a little survey of why they're studying English and they can choose more than one, uh, one reason. It's like a multiple choice uh, quiz setup. And then most of the assignments have some sort of video or something other activity in there, reading activity, writing activities. This one just being the first unit is a little bit briefer. So there's a video about a musician, guitarist, um, basically what his life is like, and then a quiz that follows up. And you'll notice, um, and Marjorie, I don't know how this is going to work later, but that these courses are all built with these what they call classic quizzes, which is within Canvas. There is a new quiz that, that that Canvas has that does not at present go with when you, when the course is copied over to you. So I did a few experimental ones with new quizzes, but only for a couple of units, and then I I stopped and made everything else classic quizzes. So you'll notice this is unpublished because it's just there as a placeholder. All right, then the next section is grammar. So there'll be whatever grammar is covered in this particular unit. So this one's about irregular verbs. So then there's an, again, H5P activity for irregular verbs and then a, a quiz within uh, Canvas as well. And then writing, this is a, a quiz where they have to write sentences. Most of the activities in this course are auto graded, but there are some that teachers have to grade. So this one is a teacher graded activity and you can I'll, I'll open it so you can see it a little bit just and, and the quizzes by the way i'll have the little rocket ship uh, icon so this is a um an S essay type quiz so what they need to do is um they need to define the word and i've given them they can look it up it's fine um, define the word, but then write a sentence with that word. So as a teacher, you can decide what you want to grade. Do you just want to grade uh, on their understanding and correct usage of the word? Or do you want to also grade, you know, spelling, punctuation, grammar, and everything else? So it, it really depends what you want to focus that on. If it were me for this particular activity, I'd probably just be sure that they understand the meaning of the word or are using it in the correct context. But that again is up to you. 
Okay. And then the quizzes, the bulk of the quizzes in this course I've made as practice quizzes. They do get three tries on the quizzes. So that's um, pretty much how most of them, there are a few graded quizzes, but only at the end of each unit. The rest I just made as practice. This you can also change if you want to make it a graded quiz that um, in your own course. Right, so let's go on here. So then, um, all right, and then there are discussions. So there, each one, each unit has a little discussion section. Sometimes there's only one, sometimes there are two topics. Then the speaking. So in the speaking that, whoops, I'll just show you, they, they all kind of look the same. So I just wanted to show you one so you can see what it looks like. So they all have the little speech bubble. Um, here, I just ask a question, which is often pretty much what the title is. And then these are, this is the downloaded PDF on how to record a video, but I've also put the instructions right here so that they can um, follow those instructions. So all the speaking assignments are set up the same way. As I go down, it's going to jump back up once it's loaded. Ah, come on. So then, um, then the next thing is the unit test. So this is teacher graded sentence writing, and it's based on the vocabulary. So they have to write a sentence with, uh, with the vocabulary has been presented in this particular unit. And then there's a multiple choice test. So there are two two tests at the end of each unit. And again, these are the, the new quizzes. They're just placeholders, but they're not published. So I've, this course is, is sequential, especially grammatically sequential. So it's set up for students as a prerequisite. So this means they can't start unit two until they finish unit one. So if you were in student view, this the rest of the units would be grayed out until they finish these uh, unit one. All right, so then unit two is about family relationships and same setup, vocabulary, um, the glossary, Quizlet, uh, H5P uh, quiz in there. And then we're talking about family. So there's a video about family values and a quiz that goes along with that. So there's always a quiz that goes along with whatever activity. So here there's uh, American family reading and then a quiz that goes along with this topic, then a writing assignment, and I'll show you how that works. So the writing assignments all have rubrics. So here's your, your pencil icon, instructions, some questions, you know, and then to ask them to write it more in a paragraph here, the questions. And then there's the rubric below. So all the writing assignments I've posted is 50 points, and then the rubric is 50 points. So it's just a general general writing rubric. So it's the same rubric for all this uh, writing assignments. Okay. Okay, so then again, you know, whoops. Thing still is still loading here. Give me a second. There we go. All right. So there's some different videos here besides. So we just the writing assignment. This is a video about technology and how it affects relationships. And a quiz with that. Bed and Summer is a Robert Louis Stevenson poem. So I read the whole poem, and then there's a line by line dictation on this poem. And then a another writing assignment where they have to just describe a, a, a picture. And then some grammar, we're looking at the future tense, will versus going to. This is a drag and drop similar to the computer one, um, H5P activity, and then another quiz. And then discussion topic, speaking topics. And then again, at the end of the unit, the sentence writing test and the multiple choice test. And then unit three is people and biographies, same setup, vocabulary, glossary, and then the quizzes that follow. 
And um, this is sort of a large section on Ray Charles. It's based, um, there's a reading from Voice of America. So it's based on reading part one and reading part two. But I added just some introduction about Ray Charles, a little biography, um, a couple of his songs to listen to. And then these quizzes just go with the readings. And then a little bit about Ernest Hemingway. Again, it's a reading, a little bit of a video quiz, and then a, a dictation on some lines out of Farewell to Arms. And then Vincent van Gogh video and a quiz. And the grammar in this section is present perfect. So there's an introduction to the grammar and then some practice. So H5P and another quiz. And then another H5P activity. This is where they have to put the words in the correct order using present perfect. A little bit about using conjunctions when they're writing and then describing a person. So this is a writing assignment. And then discussion questions. And then sometimes the discussion questions are followed by speaking on basically the same topic. So they've already thought about it by posting in the discussion and reading other students, uh, their classmates. The discussions all have, um, again, you can change this, but I've set them up so that they have to post their own and then read, read um, other classmates and reply to two of them. So they have to reply to two of their classmates. Okay, let me see if that'll just take me back where we were. Okay, let me look at the chat while this is happening. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then let's see, where were we? Okay, so then the speaking and then again, the unit test, the writing and the, the multiple choice test. Whoops. All right. Okay, so now we're on cities, countries, places, and it starts with the advanced vocabulary list. There are six of these, so this is group one. Again, Quizlet practice here, and then some assignments. Here's some information, and there's a video about building the Golden Gate Bridge. There's a dictation on this, I left my heart in San Francisco. So they listen to the song and fill in um, certain words, the blanks. And then they need to write about a famous landmark in, in their country or another one they know about it that they've seen. And this one has three different videos. Again, you can decide if you wanna keep them all. It was hard to choose because I liked all of them. So there's Afghan girl and the quiz that goes along with this. Bermuda Triangle quiz, Terracotta Warriors quiz. These all came from ESL video, if you're familiar with ESL video, they have some pretty cool things. And then grammar, this time is present perfect. Country they would like to visit, this is a discussion. Uh, you can talk about their favorite vacation, what they did. And then where they would like to go on vacation for speaking, and then your test. Unit five is government rules, laws. Again, vocabulary. Um, there, some of these have crosswords. So I'll show you the crossword. I was kind of excited that H5P has this. So they can do, um, and it's all based on the vocabulary, right? So they just would put their answers in here. So if I can spell acronym, acronym. And then, you know, it just goes in here. So then they have uh, same, they'd fill all this in, in here. They can show the solution, submit, social solution, retry. So yeah, I thought I was excited that they had the crossword puzzles. So there are some unit five, six, not all units have the crossword puzzles, but some of them do. Okay, sorry, I got to Still waiting for it to load again. So then five. Okay, there we go. Now it's ready. So unit five, let me go here. Um, now it's government rules and laws. So they're going to do a listening reading about Susan B. Anthony. 
and a quiz related to the vocabulary and to this video. And then a little writing of what they've learned about this person. Then there's Martin Luther King. Um, this is his last speech. There's a quiz about that. And then also a short dictation from the I Have a Dream speech. And then a video on human rights in Canada. And then also a, a quiz that goes with that. Now we're looking at past progressive. So there's a quiz related to that. Um, discussion about um, what kind of government their country has. And then a speaking that's basically the same thing, but they will be able to practice speaking what they've talked about here. And then six is on food. So this one, the, the glossaries are divided up. So there's phrasal verbs list one, and then there's a separate glossary that has to do with food and cooking. And then the Quizlet is on the phrasal verbs. And then this is another type of H5P activity that is um, multiple choice. So there are a few of this type in here in this course as well. So you can just see, let that load so you can see what it looks like. So they would just choose the correct answer. So pouring liquid over meat while it's cooking. And then, you know, if it's correct, it'll give them a little check mark and then it goes on to the next one. So that's an example of, of, multi, of a multiple choice type activity, sorry, activity. Okay, now we just have to wait for it to load again. So this, so what I'd like to do, how are we doing? We're, we're still got some time. I, I pretty much want to go through all the units. I won't open everything, but just so you can kind of see what the other topics are. So we're in about six. Hope scrolling doesn't make people dizzy. Four, five, six. Yeah. All right. So then there, this also has a crossword puzzle uh, to do with the food uh, vocabulary. Then there's a writing about diets where I ask them to, to look at, um, you know, ads that they see and do they think that that's a good diet, a bad diet, you know, just some critical thinking kind of activity is what that's designed for. There's an uh, dictation on organic foods, and then some videos um, about how to make camembert, which is kind of interesting. The woman does have a bit of an accent, and there's, so I mentioned that in there, and there's a little bit of French in there as well, but the vocabulary quiz only relates to the English part, so they don't have to know French. Story about McDonald's, and also um, the quiz related to that, past progressive, and a quiz about that discussion, who does the cooking at your house? And so they need to talk about that. And then speaking about, just talking about diets, have they ever tried a diet? Did it work? You know, what did they think about diets? And so on, and then a test. And then seven, again, this one's divided into two glossaries. So one is the phrasal verbs list two, and then the nutrition vocabulary. And then the Quizlet is on the phrasal verbs. And then nutrition, there's a vocabulary, another H5P, and a crossword, and a dictation related to phrasal verbs. And then some videos about, um, no, this is a reading, I'm sorry, about food and childhood obesity. And then a quiz related to that. There's a video about diabetes and a quiz related to that. Obesity in the US quiz healthy food choices and a quiz. And then a writing about, there's a, there's a, a short reading as part of this, can healthy diets prevent violence? And then used to and be used to, a discussion about a healthy diet in their country, what they consider to be healthy, um, a speaking activity about how you stay healthy, and then your tests. And then eight is the next advanced vocabulary list, group three. And then more uh, health and body vocabulary. So just a review of that. And there's another dictation. And then writing about health insurance and it's Canada versus US. There's a video included in here where they would be looking at that. How sugar affects the brain and a 
a quiz for that, health benefits of laughter, how it's good for you, and then the quiz related to that. And now we're looking at past perfect, so there's some introduction on the use of past perfect in a quiz. Um, what discussion, what do you think is a healthy lifestyle? Um, a speaking activity about going to the doctor and your tests. And then illness and disease, this is in unit nine. The next group, advanced list, uh, group four. It also includes some medical terms in here. And then the ac quiz activities. And when you see that uh, under the vocabulary and you see this little assignment with the pencil, those are all H5P when they're quizzes. If it's a quiz, Canvas quiz, it looks like the little rocket ship. So then there's uh, a listening about Helen Keller and a quiz related to that and writing about what they've learned about Helen Keller. A little video about pesticides and the link to ADHD and a quiz, um, a link to a coronavirus and a quiz, um, and a writing about someone they know or, or know about that has a disability. And then there's a, a writing about research health problems. This takes them out to Medline where they can, you know, they're instructed to look up one, uh, one health issue and, and write about it. So it's a little bit of a research uh, before they write. And then grammar, we're looking at present perfect versus simple past about illness, if they've known anyone that's had a serious illness, and then a speaking assignment about the disabled, and then sentence writing. And then end of unit nine, which is halfway through the course, there's a midterm test. And this is just a multiple choice test. So then there's the emergency disasters. Again, this is divided into two glossaries, phrasal verbs, and then the emergency disasters vocabulary. And then again, activities, a Quizlet, and then some more activities within uh, H5P. And then a, a phrasal verbs quiz using the Canvas a rocket ship. Uh, so a Canvas quiz. And then some videos about, this is about heart attacks, and then a, a quiz related to that. There's a dictation about heart attacks, a little video about Doctors Without Borders, and a quiz about that. And then a, a writing about a fire. So there's a picture in here and they have to write about uh, what happened in this fire. And then grammar here is reported indirect speech and a quiz related to that. Discussion, have you ever called 911 and to describe what, what happened? And this is speaking related to that emergency and disasters if they've experienced anything like that in the test. And then 11, we're looking at clothes shopping. So this is a combination. So it's an advanced vocabulary list five and a shopping, a shopping vocabulary. And then the quiz is related to that, another crossword. And then there's a, a listening about Black Friday and then a quiz. A lot of the listenings will also have, um, I've also posted the text so they can read along with it as well. And then answering some questions about um, about shopping, and then writing some sentences with the vocabulary words. So this would be another teacher graded assignment. And now we're looking at conditional, the real conditional, and a quiz for that. And then another type of conditional H5P activity. And then here they have to write questions. This is actually a Wordle. So this came in from a long time ago, if you remember Wordles these old wordles or word, whatever these were called, right? So they just have these, so they have to write sentences with those words. Okay, let's come back. Oh, good, it jumped us back to where we were. Okay. All right. Some shopping is where we were. Come on. And then a little bit of a writing about, whoops, discussion rather about, um, nope, I just skipped. I'm sorry. Where do we go? Here. 
if they've ever bought something with a problem. So there, that talks about, you know, how you can exchange or get a refund, things like that. And then what kind of shopping are, shopper are you? Are you an impulse shopper? Do you compare prices and so on? And then this section is about computers. So again, it's vocabulary related to computer and technology, uh, quizzes related to that. And then about their own use, you know, some writing about how they use technology. Um, this is a video about video games and how they've been used uh, to support democracy and conflict resolution. And then there's a quiz that goes with that. And then one about educational technology and how that's used and how computers, this is writing, a writing assignment. There's a reading that goes with it. And then how computers have changed the way we think. This is a video and then they have a quiz that goes with that. And the grammar, hope versus wish, discussion, what do they use their computer for? And then the speaking is, is similar. So it's just a speaking practice. And then 14 and 15 are about occupations and careers. So both those units, both these units are about that. So this one is just phrasal verbs list four and then word forms, some more word forms and jobs. So this glossary is a combined glossary. And then the quizzes that follow that. And then some assignments. This is a video about a manager of Target and quiz related, a restaurant manager, the other job he has quiz. Uh, this is a Learn360 video about being an entrepreneur. And then I added this Holland, um, if some of you have used the Holland code, the assessment. So there, I have the link in here for them to do the assessment. And then they need to talk about, and this is a discussion, uh, where they need to talk about the results. So I left this discussion, instead of putting it under discussions, I've left it here because that way it's directly related to this. And then there's a link to ONET where they can explore careers and look for something that they might be interested in. And then there's a dictation, H5P dictation, and then a writing about their dream job, what they would like to be doing. And now we're looking at modals of advice and regret and the quiz is related to that. And then under discussion is what do they want to do in terms of a career, what are they looking at? And then speaking, again, similar. You know, what do they do now? What do they want to do? You know, what's their career interest? And then 15 is also more about careers, education, and training. So their job skills, job search vocabulary, quizzes that go along with that. Um, and then you know, it's a career path, right? Robert Frost poem and then the road not taken, right? So then quiz for that, a job interview. And this is a yeah, job interview. This is a little bit of a spoof, but I thought it was amusing for them to look at that. So it's a millennial job interview and then a quiz that related to that. And then describing their own job skills and perhaps what they did in their own country, what their career was then or what they were trained for in their own country and a dictation. And now we're looking at passive voice, discussion about what career training they've had in the past, and then speaking about their ideal job. 16 is about housing. All right, so here's housing vocabulary uh, quizzes related to that. And then some videos, an apartment for rent and a quiz, a video about us building straw houses and a quiz about tiny homes and a quiz and then a writing comparing their housing in their country with, with how it works here. And then past unreal, quiz for that. And then a discussion comparing the house, housing and a speaking about housing. And then 17 is banking. So there's vocabulary related to banking and the quizzes, a video about how to budget, like what you can afford and a quiz related to that. Um, this is from Friends. This is a ESL video about Phoebe's bank problem. And then, so they have watched the video and then answer questions. And then there's a dictation, a writing about how to budget or how do you budget. And then Future Perfect, 
and a discussion. Do you have a budget? And then speaking also about finances. And then the very last one is nature, weather, and the environment. This group advanced vocabulary is, is more related to weather vocabulary. So if they're listening to a weather forecast, they would be able to understand what they're saying. And then Quizlet activities and vocabulary uh, H5P. And then some assignments, how wolves change, change rivers. Some of you may know this one. Um, and then about how it changed rivers in, in Yellowstone when they reintroduced the wolves to Yellowstone. And then a quiz, um, oil spills and how those are a danger to animals. And then Greta Thunberg warning about her global warming and a video um, quiz related to that and a dictation. And then a little writing about global warming or climate change. And then what do they do to protect the environment? And then some speaking about that. And that's the end of the course. And then there's the final test at the very end.